Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to MK Community Brokers. My name is Mohammed. In this video, we're going to go over Chapter 7, Car Carriers. Uh, car Carriers, I explained in the chapter, this is how the diagram looks like. This is a certain, like basically you lift up the car, disable usually a damaged, damaged car, which cannot be towed by a regular tow truck and you use a car carrier to use uh, the tow truck. Uh, these are some of the uh, uh, terms that we're going to be going over in this chapter. Uh, bear with me. Uh, car care is essential to the towing, recovery, and salvage industry. Over the years, they have been widely used to transport vehicles that are too badly damaged to be towed. In recent years, car carriers have become even more essential because of an increasing large number of newer vehicles, that is, vehicles with all wheel drive and vehicles with low slung airfoils, cannot be towed. Car carrier may be used if the, if the drive wheels of the vehicle would authorize to be on the ground. If you have any doubt or question about whether the vehicle should be towed or transported by a car carrier, consult the owner manuals. You may also refer to the TRAA Vehicle Identification Guide, know this as well during the test, and the VIN codes guide on page 17 and 18 of this manual to assist you. Proper step-by-step -step operating procedures are important to ensure safety throughout the loading, transporting, and unloading process. Taking shortcuts may damage to either vehicle and serious injury or death of operator or bystanders. Remember, first be seen and second never exceed the working loan limit of your equipment or accessories or the safe towing capacity of your truck. Loading a vehicle. As you, as you slow down approach the disabled scene, engage the hazard lights of the transporting vehicle once at the scene, note any damage to the disabled vehicle on the invoice. Position the car carriage so that the vehicle may be loaded is aligned from left to right. Let the car carriage be in bed. Be sure to leave adequate space at the rear of the bed to fully extend. Do not load or unload the car carriage whether it is on even terrain, left to right. Set the brakes and engage the PTO of the car carriage. Choke both the front surfaces, rear surfaces of each rear vehicle of the car carriage. Clear bystanders from the area. Set the parking brake on the disabled vehicle so that the ve disabled vehicle cannot move freely during loading. Uh, move the car carrier bed uh, rearward so that it is clean the bed locks. Some carriers may have lock indicators marking on them. The bed locks are the devices that, de that secure the bed carriers in place during travel. Till the bed until the rear bed stabilizer. Just make contact with the ground. Failure to do so can cause severe damage to the carrier subframe. Move the bed up a rearward and makes contact on the ground. Attach the bra and attach the barrel to the proper attachment point of the disabled vehicle. Do not connect anything to fragile components such as tie rods, brake lines, etc. Dis dis disengage the winch drum and pull the cable out by hand. Attach the winch line uh, hook to the barrel and engage the winch drum. Make sure to the point that hook is facing up. Uh, tighten the winch cable until it is snug but not tight. Inspect all connection and the cable layers on the winch. Shift the transmission of the vehicle to be loaded into neutral and release the parking brake. Remove the wheel chokes if necessary. Move the steering wheel to assist in centering the vehicle into the car barrier. Uh, winch the vehicle into the car uh, carrier bed. W while winching, carefully observe the winch cable all connection and the position of the vehicle as it moves into the bed. Caution, beware to the rear ground clearance of the vehicle as it is being loaded. Place wheel uh, chokes in front of and behind the rear of the vehicle loaded vehicle. Caution, never get behind the carrier bed when it is in loaded tilted position. Move the carrier bed forward when a major part of the loaded weight of weight is forward of the carrier's rear axle or the bed. Remember the bed box damage can occur if the bed is lower into them. Move the fully loaded towards while uh, uh, fully forward while care uh, carefully driving it entry into the bed lock. Be sure that the bed has fully engaged the bed locks. Secure the rear of the disabled vehicle into the carrier bed by using two separate securing devices, one on each side. And always be cautioned to keep all attachment clear of fragile components such as brake lines, tie rods, exhaust system, oil pans, etc. Uh, remove the chokes from the loaded vehicle. If you are using a chain, carefully engage the winch and move the disabled vehicle forward, preloading the rear steering device. Attach and tighten two separate uh, steering devices to the front of the disabled vehicle, one on each side of the vehicle, a minimum of two. I like this two steering device is required by federal law for vehicle with gross vehicle weight rating of 10,000 pounds or less. A minimum of four steering devices required by federal law for vehicle over 10,000 pounds. It's highly recommended that four steering devices be used for all vehicles. Two in the front and two in the back. Highlight the whole thing. This is the important test question. Caution. A winch is not a steering device. It is to be used only for loading and unloading, not for transporting. Do a fun walk around inspection. Check the position of the vehicle on the carrier bed. Check the winch, cable, all connection, and most importantly, the security devices. 
Check for loose parts, especially on wrecked vehicles. Make sure that doors and hood and deck lid are secured. Engage the transmission of the disabled vehicle in its lower gears or in park and set the parking brake. Turn off the disabled vehicle's four-way flashes. Remove the wheel chokes from the front carrier and to the carrier and disengage the PTO. Caution. Disabled vehicle adds a substantial amount of weight onto the car carrier unit, which in, which in changes the front and rear axles weight because the car carrier unit is much more top heavy. You must adjust your driving techniques to ensure it's safe starting, turning, and stopping under all conditions. This is important. I will highlight this. During transport, merge as follow. After the disabled vehicle is loaded and secured, you should begin your merge into traffic. This should be done from the shoulder if possible and you should not enter a traffic lane and you have reached or appropriate traveling speed. Once the merge is complete, hazard lights should be turned off, um, unloading a vehicle. As you slow down approaching the scene of a delivery point, engage the hazard lights. Park the carrier in position that level to left to right, leave adequate space to the rear that is at least twice the length of the car carrier. Set the parking brake and engage the PTO. Position the wheel locks in front and behind the uh, rear wheel of the car carrier. Clear bystanders from the area. Be sure that the uh, winch cable is still tight. Move both steering device from the front of the loaded vehicle. Move the car carrier's bed uh, so that clear the red locks. Tilt the bed so that loaded vehicle is on very uh, s uh, slight incline. Put the transmission of the disabled vehicle in neutral and release the parking brake. Carefully engage the winch to let some of the cable out allowing the disabled vehicle to roll back slightly. Be sure that the rear screwing device have become loose enough to disconnect but do not disconnect them yet. Place wheel chokes uh, snugly behind the wheel of the disabled vehicle. Caution, never get behind the bed when it is in loaded tilted position. Highlight this, this is important. Remove both rear screwing device. Be sure that the bed locks are clear and tilt the bed until the rear bed stabilizer makes contact with the ground. Make sure the bed rear wire until it makes contact with the ground. Move all wheel locks chokes from the disabled vehicle. Carefully engage the winch to let the cable out, uh, so uh, allowing the loaded vehicle to roll rearward safely onto the ground. Caution, be aware of the rear ground clearance of the vehicle as it being loaded. Put the disabled vehicle in park or in its lowest gear and set the parking brake so the vehicle will not roll. Disconnect all remaining loaded attachment from the disabled vehicle. Return the carrier bed to the horizontal and locked position. Clear all oil, antifreeze, and broken loose debris from the deck. Secure which line accessories, blocking, and wheel locks, chains, room the shovels in, in the travel position. Remove the carriage wheel, wheel chokes, engage the PT, and turn off the hazard lights. General rules and responsibilities for safety. Uh, just load this as far as well. Uh, just never use a car carrier that does not have a headboard, the strong permanent uh, vertical device fixed between the cab and load to protect the cab and its occupant. Never get beneath the car carrier bed after it has been lifted. Never get behind the bed when it is loaded and the tilt the position the winch could release or the connection could become loose. Follow the recommended maintenance and inspection procedure provided by the manufacturer of all equipment that you use. Never exceed the gross vehicle weight rating or the safe towing capacity of the car carrier. Never exceed the working load limit when traveling. Avoid fast starts. As you can see, this is all repetitive. Periodically check to make sure the position of the disabled vehicle or the car carrier has not changed. And check the screwing devices to make sure they are tight. When traveling or uneven ground, uh, make sure you to proceed slowly. Drive slower and allow greater distance for stopping to help ensure better braking ability and steering control. Uh, now it's a glossary. Uh, this is just for your records. Obviously, like like the ter ter term uh, uh, glossary is like basically whatever the important terms were in the chapter. They just put it in one page. Uh, it's always good to know the, uh, the glossary because a lot of questions might come in from there as well. A lot didn't do that a lot. They picked something from here. Now, what is a boom? Now explain. Is this considered what what it is considered as? So you should know uh, every part of it. Uh, but we did cover most of them as well we were reading. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of the glossary as what, what the important part it is. I would actually read through the glossary as well just to get to know each definition part so that if they do ask a trick question in that, uh, you will know. As I said it again, with the time I took my tow truck driving license, it was uh, a 20 question. You need to get at least uh, 17 or more right, which is 80% or more. So it is a difficult test, so keep that in mind. You need to pass with the high mark. You need to get a lot of questions right. Um, with that said guys, thank you again guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any other questions, comment, concern, please comment and subscribe. This was the last part of the video, so I will post this, I'll post this uh, periodically a day after day or two, three days from Gap. So that you, you know, you, I don't want to push it, put it all in one shot so that, you know, you don't know which part is which. But I will periodically put uh, parts, uh, uh, you know, the sending order so that you could you, you review one part at a time and help process it again. 
Uh, thank you again, guys, for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment, like, subscribe. I'll try my part on my behalf to help you out as much as I can. Thank you again, guys, for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it.